Most of us have been raised with video our entire lives, and we can tell the difference between a home video of a birthday party and a major motion picture. Some of these common mistakes still affect our video shoots on a daily basis, and they're very hard to get away from. What we're gonna do is take a look at those errors and show you how to fix them. I'm Tom Skronsky, and this is the five deadly sins of amateur video. The first error we're gonna look at is known as fire hosing. I want each and every one of you to take a look at this clip and tell me if you see any mistakes. What fire hosing is, is basically not knowing what you want to shoot. You're using the viewfinder as your eye instead of your eye to see where you want to shoot and actually going there in a nice smooth fashion and making sure you have a controlled movement. The next deadly camera sin is known as jogging. Let's take a look at this clip and see if you can tell me what's wrong with it. Now the problem that occurs when you're jogging with the camera is that really you're just kind of wobbling the camera around and bouncing. It's not very steady, it's not smooth, and I can't necessarily understand what's happening. The camera looks shaky and that's not the original intended effect. Now dynamic and shooting things on the go, very, very powerful, but only if you do them correctly. This next deadly sin you may have noticed in videos of your own. Let's take a look at this clip and tell me if you could find out what the mistake is here. Now the problem with backlighting is when it occurs, you can't see the subject. You have no idea what's happening. They look badly lit. It looks very amateur. The key is to move the subject in front or away from the camera and turn the cameraman's back to the sun. When you switch positions, the sun basically acts as a key light for your subject, therefore illuminating the entire area. One of the next most common sins that you'll see in everybody's amateur video is the idea of nose room or lead room being completely eliminated from their clips. Take a look at this and tell me if you see what I'm talking about. Psychologically, this works in our minds because it gives us space for the subject to look to. Now, without that space, with it really compressed, it looks like our subject's right about to look into a brick wall. So we need to fix that and give our subject some nose room to make our video look a little bit more professional. Now we've reached the final and deadliest sin of all amateur video, the sin of headroom. Take a look at this clip. Let me know if you see anything that's wrong with it. Now the problem with this clip is that there's too much space above the subject's head. What we're doing with video is turning the ordinary into the extraordinary. We get to look at everything every single day with our own eyes, but the camera doesn't look at things the same way. So we need to make sure that everything that's in that frame is very full and we don't have any dead space. When we have dead space, the video looks ugly and unnatural. Another variation of headroom is known as cutting off the chin or part of the subject's face. Now this tends to be okay if we cut off the top of somebody's head because then our frame is still full. On the other hand, if we were to cut off somebody at the chin and give them additional headroom, it doesn't look natural anymore. Now sometimes the five deadly sins of amateur video are simply unavoidable. It's up to us to understand each and every one of them. 
When it comes to headroom, having the most amount of space above the head, we know it's something we should avoid now. We know that when it comes to jogging, we should get a smoother, nicer, easier feeling movement with the camera. When it comes to fire hosing, we've realized we don't need to use our eye in the viewfinder as the actual eye of the camera. We can actually shoot where we want to shoot by knowing ahead of time by looking there first. We also know that we don't necessarily need that lead room. We need space in front of the nose, but we don't need to cut it off. And backlighting is something that should always be avoided because we don't want to film just silhouettes. So next time you're out there filming with one of these guys, be critical of your work. Try to understand why you're filming what you're filming. Is that really the best way to go about it? There's only one way to know, practice. Now go out there, use one of these guys, and have fun.